Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today I want to talk all about Manfred Mann because he's having a birthday this week and he's one of my favorites of all time. Well, Manfred jumped onto the scene in the mid-60s with a band bearing his name and they were a beat group, as they called them at the time, sort of up-tempo rock music. You'll recognize songs like do wa dee 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 dum dee dee do 5 4 3 2 one and that was before for the moon landing, Pretty Flamingo, My Name is Jack, and all such things. But Manfred quickly grew tired of the pop success, and he ventured into the hardcore, wo hardcore world, it's even hard to say, of avant-garde jazz fusion. And I mean really avant-garde. And this was with a band called Manfred Mann's Chapter 3. It was very improvisational, very dissonant at times, very, very innovative. This proved to be a bit too, <laughs> too much for audiences to handle. And so he compromised and came out with a progressive rock band that took some of the elements of the Manfred Mann's Chapter 3, or was it Chapter 2? Um, I always get my numbers confused, which is kind of weird for a band that had a song called 54321. But in any case... Um, the Manfred Mann and his Earth Band were really, really quintessential progressive rock, and they really ought to be mentioned in the same breath as bands like ELP and Genesis and Yes and bands like that, because they were at that level of sort of sonic complexity, improvisation, really good songwriting, and perhaps most uniquely to Manfred Mann's Earth Band, and maybe this is why they didn't get the fame of some of the others. One one of the things that they were most known for were covers, but their covers took a song and they did stuff with it that was completely different than the original, so much so that you'd never really recognize it necessarily. I mean, for instance, on their, their breakout album in terms of what I think was really, really good. Well, before we get there, let's go to the first album. Um, the first album was so great. It had a wonderful cover of the song Captain Bobby Stout that was absolutely wonderful. Um, California Coastline, which opens the album, really quite almost R&B. Their next album, Glorified Magnified, my least favorite. So let's go to the one I was talking about that really sort of is where they found their sound. And that was 1973's Messin. Uh, the song Messin that opens up the album, just a wonderful prog rocker. Um, they did, they sort of, by now, they had already established the fact that they'd take a lot of Bob Dylan songs, turn them on their head. This one had Get Your Rocks Off, but in a very different way. They did the wonderful New Orleans classic made famous by its composer, Dr. John Mardi Gras Day. And they continued to go from strength to strength. Solar Fire from later that year might be their best album, but they had a lot of albums you could say that about. Um, it begins with... Father of Day, Father of Night, a rather obscure Bob Dylan song that they turn into an absolute prog rock masterpiece, an absolute knock your socks off. It's the kind of thing where, you know, the ads for Maxell um, tapes that they had in the 70s and 80s, where it's the man in the chair and he's being blown back by the sound. That might be what he was listening to. That's the kind of song that it was. And the whole album is really good. There are a lot of classical references as well. Um, Saturn, uh, of course, um, is a nod to, or, or Joybringer, rather, is a nod to Gustav Holst. Um, you've got um, Earth, the Circle, which is a nod to Claude Debussy. Wonderful stuff. And the next, um, the next year, they came out with The Good Earth, uh, which had a cover of the wonderful Gary Wright tune, Give Me the Good Earth, along with some originals like Earth Him and Sky High. They're, again, very earthy and spacey. 1975 brought Nightingales and Bombers, where they started another tradition of um, doing covers of Bruce Springsteen songs that sound absolutely nothing like the original. Um, Spirits in the Night by Bruce Springsteen, you would not necessarily recognize it in the Manfred Mann version. One of the best songs ever, frankly, that was... Um, 
Again, a cover, but not one that you might recognize. It leads off the second side, and this is Visionary Mountains, one of the absolute best songs that Manfred Mann ever did. And although they changed vocalists from Mick Rogers to Chris Hamlet Thompson for their next album, they didn't miss a beat in terms of what Manfred Mann's sound was, a combination of originals and really grooved out covers. And this album called The Roaring Silence had their most popular song ever, and this was their cover of um, Blinded by the Light, another one of the more obscure Bruce Springsteen tracks. And it made it big because it had everything. Great keyboards, great guitar, great production. But it's perhaps best known for the fact that Chris Thompson um, did something to the lyrics that a lot of people misunderstood in a comical way. Um, so the original lyric was, I think, turned loose like a goose, and they changed it to revved up like a deuce. But a lot of people heard that is wrapped up like a douche. And maybe that's the reason it went to number one. Maybe it was something else. But never mind, because they were back with another great album called Watch, the opening track Circles. Again, I keep saying it, one of their very best Angel Station followed that up and the song Bell of the Earth. What a wonderful song. And that was an original. That was a Manfred Mann original. Of course, it has the obligatory uh, Bob Dylan cover and a lot of other originals. 1980s album Chance was another great one. Um, you had On the Run, a wonderful co-production, co meaning co-written by Manfred Mann himself and the great Tony Ashton. For You, another Bruce Springsteen cover, nothing like the original. And they kept going throughout the 80s, really good stuff. And they still play live to this day. And Manfred has still absolutely got it. Um, the band had a lot of great instrumentals, a lot of great covers. Manfred's playing could, it sort of, it straddled the line between um, virtuosic and very sort of, uh, and something that almost blended in. He wasn't someone to necessarily hog the limelight in his own band. His solos were, of course, very good, but he didn't really impose himself musically. The band were a very balanced band at all times, and he was the one who continued to keep it going and continues to keep it going. A real, real fine musician who produced... Really, some of the if you like prog rock with a, some classical references, with some improvisation, with some really outrageously wonderful covers, you need to frankly listen to all of those classic 70s albums from Manfred Mann's Earth Band because they are really, really good. You you will not be disappointed if that's if that's your genre. And even if it's not, I think it's actually even more accessible than a lot of the other prog rock that actually did go to the top of the charts. Manfred Mann, happy birthday, and keep on doing what you do best. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.